very large infrastructure investment. Order. Question number four, James Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister for Primary Industries. Does he agree with the reported view of the Ministry for Primary Industries that there is nothing wrong with the fishing industry being allowed to monitor itself? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Mr. Speaker, no. The reported view is incorrect and News Talk ZB has now changed the headline the member is referring to. MPI never made such a statement as it would be misleading. As the regulator, it's important that MPI retains independent oversight of the industry. However, I think there is benefit in allowing the industry to manage some administrative functions. There are five levels of audit in place to ensure the information is correct. Supplementary. Supplementary question. James Shaw. Does he see no conflict in having FishServe, a company that is owned by New Zealand's fishing industry, monitoring the catch of species like red snapper, John Dory and blue nose, all of which have been overfished by that industry? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Mr Speaker, well, monitoring is indeed a broad term. Most people's understanding of monitoring is about compliance monitoring. But punching and recording numbers isn't the same as compliance monitoring. Compliance monitoring is the sole function of MPI. They are the regulator and they have complete access to fish serves records. As I mentioned in the answer to my primary, Mr Speaker, there are five levels of audit as well. Supplementary. Supplementary question. James Shaw. Is he confident that fish servers accurately reporting on overfishing, given that MPI identified errors in 17 per cent of forms reporting commercial fishers' catch? The Honourable Nathan Guy. Uh, yes, I do have confidence in the audits that are in place. Of course, they pick up any issues uh, as, they, as they work their way through. There, are, there is an MPI audit, there's a financial audit that's done by Ernst & Young, uh, there's a fish serve internal audit, uh, there's also catch effort auditing, and the member may be aware that MPI is going to be rolling out, starting on the 1st of October this year, electronic reporting. And as a result of that, that will speed up the efficiency of fish serve it will actually also mean more transparency and move away from paper-based records where there are currently some errors. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Can the minister confirm that in 2013 he gave FishServe new powers to determine when bans on commercial fishing could take effect in overfished areas? The Honourable well, Nathan Mr Guy. Speaker, first of all, these powers were originally devolved to fish serve in 2001 by Pete Hodgson. The 2013 order and council just rolled them over. The changes that I made in 2013 were making fish serve the approved service delivery organisation. Before this, it was Seafood Industry Council. And secondly, allowing fish serve to manage client number management and sequencing, i.e. one, two, three, Four. Very technical changes indeed. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. So surely he'll concede that if FishServe has the power to decide when fishing bans take effect, then they do have a regulatory role in the fishing industry. Uh, the well, Honourable Nathan Guy. Well, Mr Speaker, I think I've addressed that already. Uh, this, this afternoon by saying that fish serve are basically just a collection of data. MPI has access to all that data. Uh, when a fisher indeed does go over the annual catch entitlement, uh, they need to go and get more ace, or indeed there's a financial penalty uh, through deemed values that I set as Minister. Supplementary. Supplementary question, James Shaw. Can he assure the House that there is nothing in the 14 reports on fish dumping investigations, which MPI is currently refusing to release to university researchers, which raises the same kinds of issues highlighted in the Operation Achilles scandal last year? 
The Honourable well, Mr. Mr Speaker, MPI has been incredibly transparent, particularly on the back of the Heron report, where there was a huge amount of information that was released. Uh, MPI have continual investigations underway, and when they are at specific stages, it is not appropriate for them to release that information. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, James Shaw. And my, my question then was quite specific in relation to the 14 reports, the 14 specific reports that MPI is currently withholding from university researchers, and the Minister did not address those, uh, those reports. No, but the, the question wasn't specific enough. It talked about can he assure the House there's nothing um, in those 14 reports, and they, and they mentioned that they are being withheld. And the first thing is the member responded by saying MPI is very transparent. Questions been addressed. Yes. <laughs> Supplementary. <laughs> Supplementary question. If the member wants assistance, and I've told the House many, many times, if the members want assistance with their questions, tighten them up. Certainly. Supplementary question. James Shaw. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will he ask MPI to release the 14 reports on fish dumping investigations, which it is so far refusing to release? The Honourable well, Nathan Mr Aye. Speaker, the member has been in the House a while now. He should know that politicians don't get involved in matters that are to do with prosecutions or investigations. I don't tell MPI when to release official information. They release it themselves when they are ready. Question number five.